And he says, you know what? You are the best toilet cleaner ever. What's your name? Crystal, you are the best toilet cleaner ever. Good job. <laughs> and so I say, you know what, Crystal? I'm going to promote you to fries. And so Crystal's on fries, and then she makes the best fries ever. And what's your name? Brenda. You know that Crystal works at 7 o'clock shift. So you come and do your McDonald's French fry run every day at 7 o'clock because Crystal makes excellent fries. And so the manager says, you know what, Crystal? Not only do you clean up excellent toilet, but you make the best fries. So I'm going to promote you to assistant manager. And then you're the best assistant manager. And then they say, you know what? You're going to be manager of McDonald's. And don't sleep. Don't laugh. Managers of different restaurants makes pretty good money. And then they say, you know what, Crystal? You have done this manager role in excellence. So we have a program. It's a program where we promote our managers and help them become franchise owners. So we want you in that program. And so not only do we give you the education, but we help fund it for you. And so after you take that class, you become a franchise owner. And it's a small McDonald's, not a lot of traffic, but that McDonald's does so well because you manage your own business in excellence, then you get two, and then three, and then four. And by the time that you're 28 years old, all because you cleaned an excellent toilet, you own four restaurants, and you are now a millionaire. In order for you to succeed, do everything you do with excellence. So what is conflict? When you think of conflict, what are words that come to your mind? Just shout them out. Problems. 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 Disagreements. Disagreements. What else? Arguments. Arguments. Give me two more. Barriers. Barriers. One more. Bickering. Bickering. Okay. Go ahead and do a few of them. We think of battles, strife, disagreements, screaming, unsettled, arguing, war, anger, fight. Okay, and so I'm going to shift gears just a little bit. Now, I'm going to ask you guys to put your maturity cap on, and what I mean is that thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to say some words that are kind of going to make you snicker and laugh, and that's fine, but after I say them, come back, <laughs> all right? Don't stay in the giggle box too long. All right, so when I say burp, what do you think of? Gas. Gas. What else? Soda. Who, who, who brought the Pepsi? Y'all, don't everybody start burping in the middle of this presentation. That would just be so awkward. Okay, so what else? So it's kind of gross, right? That like, and especially if like someone has just got to drinking Kool-Aid and like nachos. Y'all know that smell of like the sweet and the, oh my God, exactly. It's just disgusting, all right? So what if I say sweat? Exercise. Exercise, okay. What else? Dirty, hot. Dirty, hot. Stinky. So you're at the gym and you haven't seen someone in a while. Oh, what's up, fam? And they just like dripping. You just like, good to see you, right? Like, step back, okay? And so what if I said, here's a big one, y'all. Flatulence. Fart. Like, fart should be removed from the English language. I hate the word fart. But yes, I'm going to say flatulence instead. What do you think about when you hear the word flatulence? <laughs> Say it again. Arguments. Arguments. You're going to get upset when someone farts around you, okay? <laughs> what else do you think of when you think of flatulence? I can't even say it without smells. smells. It's just awful. I have three kids, 15, 6, and 3. Um, the other day, my 6 and my 3-year-old were, you know, showering, and I got them out and get, getting them dressed. And my 3-year-old, as we're getting dressed, all of a sudden, we at the same time say, and my six-year-old is just smiling. I'm like, dude, you could have gave us warning. You know what I'm saying? It just makes you upset, right? And so you think about burping and gas and flatulence and sweating. And you think of all of those things, and we think that it's nasty. And we think that it's negative. But let's go back to the top. Do you know what burping does for your body? It releases gas. When you eat, you not only are swallowing food, but you're swallowing air. And that buildup of air, if trapped in you, will cause bloating, and it will also um, make it harder for your body to digest food. So even though it's nasty, it's natural, and it's necessary. What about sweating? It's your body's internal air conditioning system, exactly. If you're out running track, playing football, and, you're, and your body starts to overheat, 
past what 98.6 is like your body's um, effective safe temperature. If your body starts to heat up beyond that, then you start to sweat and then it cools it down. It's nasty, but what? Natural and necessary. And what about flatulence? Yeah, it's gas. It's disgusting. But what happens is as your digestive system works to break down foods into nutrients that you can use, it also builds up gas. And again, if your body didn't get the gas out, it would make it harder for you to digest food. It would be painful and uncomfortable. So farting, though it's nasty and negative, it is also necessary and natural. And so is conflict. Conflict is something that is natural and necessary. So now that we're, we've kind of shifted gears on how we think about farting and how we think about conflict, give me some words that you can now use to define conflict other than those negative words that we used at first. Communication. What else? Necessary. Solving a problem. What else? Solutions. I like it. All right, here we go. It's natural. It's positive. It's maturity. It's healthy. It's communication. It's productive. It's helpful. It's necessary. It's good. Conflict is good. There's no way that you and I can live in the same environment and not at some point have a conflict. It's not conflict that's bad. It's how we handle conflict. And we generally handle conflict one of three ways. The first one is aggressive. It's like, so I heard you with, what? So, and when? And what, uh, what, uh, what? It's all of this. <laughs> it's all of this. It's in your face. It's screaming. Crazy text. That's aggressive. So that's when conflict becomes bad. And then the second way is I'm going to ignore you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be passive aggressive, which means I'm not even really going to acknowledge you. So what I do is, you know what? I'm mad at you. What I'm going to do is turn this way. I don't see her. I will not speak to her. I'm going to ignore her in the hallways. And when she says hello, I'm going to be like, hi. And girl, <laughs> So that's another way that we handle conflict, okay? So again, it's not the way that, it's not, hand, it's not conflict itself, but it's how we handle it. So typically, sorry, we are aggressive, or we, number two, we avoid it. And so we're not going to talk about that, because we're masters at aggression and avoiding conflict. I don't need to teach you anything else about that. So what we're going to do now is talk about appropriate ways to handle conflict, Okay. So the first thing you want to go to is that there is always, one more, a catalyst. What's a catalyst mean? Situation. Not quite. Keep going. Um, Away. It, it makes something faster. It makes something faster. Okay, almost there. You're right. It can't speed it up, but a catalyst more so is something that starts it. The pop-off, the jump-off, the issue. What is the beginning of it? What, is, what sparks it? Okay? So there's always a situation. You cut me off. You took my boyfriend. You rolled your eyes. I don't, that's the catalyst. Okay? So what we have to do is ask ourselves, because there's going to be a lot of catalysts. You probably will have about 50, I don't know how to make the plural of catalyst. Catalyst? Catalyst. Okay. You'll probably have 50 catalysts in a day. And your question to yourself is, does every should I even address this issue? That's the hard question. Is this even worth my time, energy, and effort? So the first question you ask yourself to help you with that question is, I want to pick my battles. Have you guys been to Chuck E. Cheese lately? Anybody? Oh, that place is awful, isn't it? It's just like so many kids. I'm like, oh, my God. Okay. So you work there? Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> are you Chucky? Yes, yeah, I'm Chucky. You are Chucky? <laughs> are you like spanky leg Chucky? No, I have to get in it like what, at least once a month. Wow. Oh, it's sweaty in that suit. 
it's natural and necessary because it's hot <laughs> and your body temperature will heat above 98.6 in the Chucky suit. So, got it. All right, so we're going to pick our battles. What you have, so my point was, as I talked to Chucky, I got excited. It's like meeting Santa Claus. Can I take your picture at the end? Yeah. <laughs> Chucky. All right, so what happens is that, that machine or that, whatever you call it, the, um, the little machine where they have the little thing you hold in your hand and the little silly monsters pop up and you, boom, 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 and you just go, 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 right? That's how a lot of us walk around. Oh, she said something to me. I'm going to get her. Oh, she looked at me wrong. And my mama shouldn't have said that. And he shouldn't have did this. And you walk around all day, every day, just attacking every battle. So that machine is not even really that important. I don't get, like, I don't want the prize. I'm giving it to my kids. But for some reason, when I play that game, I'm serious about it. And I'm so serious that by the time I'm finished, my hand is cramping up. I'm sweating, I'm breathing hard, and I have spent so much time, energy, and effort because I'm attacking everything that I see. And if you live your life like that, then you will go through life in pain and tired all the time because every time someone looks at you wrong, cuts you off in traffic, or does anything, you're going to attack it. <laughs> so when we're talking about conflict resolution, the first question is, is this even worth my time? For example, you're driving. Someone cuts you off, and you like, they need to know. <laughs> they just got to know. So you speed up, whip behind them, on front of them, you get right next to them, and you just look. Give them the mug, the light changes, and both of you guys drive off. And you feel better because now he knows. <laughs> Was it worth it? Was it worth it? Okay? So pick your battles. The second thing you need to know, you're fine, is what will it prove or benefit? Sometimes, if there is nothing good, positive, or necessary to come out of addressing an issue, then don't address it. For example, like the whole light cutting me off, if there's no need to address it, then I'm not going to spend my time, energy, or effort doing so. Okay? And then the next thing you need to ask yourself is will it distract from a more important issue. So let's just say your teachers are up here teaching and they're, you know, saying we got to push, we got to get the GPAs up and they're really, you know, targeting this is your junior and senior year. You guys really need to maintain this and this and this. And you say, excuse me, um, downstairs in the vending machine, we got a hot fries. And they're like, what? Yeah. So is that a conflict? Yes, because I need hot fries, you know? That's a conflict for me. However, it is distracting away from the more important issue of GPAs and grades. So you have to ask yourself, is this issue even worth addressing? And if the answer is no, then you just keep it moving. By keep it moving, I mean, I'm going to give them a pass. I'm going to let it go. It's no big deal. I'm going to move on, okay? So is that hard for some of you to do? is to say, yeah, I'm going to let them go. Not so much. Great. Then, then that's great because so many people do this all day. So the majority of you say, you know what, for the most part, that's not my issue, and that's great. So if the answer is yes to these questions, thank you. What you then have to ask yourself is, am I the person to address it? So we've moved on from, yes, this issue needs to be addressed. We've settled that. That's the first question. And then the next question is, am I the one to address it? So what you have to ask yourself now is one more, is what is my relationship with the person? Is this person a stranger? And so what you have to ask yourself or tell yourself about a stranger is that you don't know where they come from, what they care about, or what they can do. For example, that same person at the light that you so mad about and you're going to tell them off and you whip around and pull up and you mug them and they mug you back and let down their window and step out with a gun and now you're like, oh my God, and you, you know, burn off because you are handling conflict with a stranger and you have no idea. That man could be on his way to jail for life. And he could care less about what happens in the next day. And you mugging him because he cut you, cut in front of you. 
But it's strange because you have to be careful because you do not know where they come from, care about, or what they can do. I think about when in movies sometimes someone like a Kevin Hart will go up to this big Debo dude, but he's sitting down. And he's all up in his face yapping all five, two, three of him. And then the guy pushes back from the table and he makes this skirt sound. And he stands up and he's like, what'd you say? He's a stranger. You don't know what he cares about, what he can do, where he come from. Also, with strangers, you don't know their story. So the girl who walks around all day thinking that she's better than everybody, walk around stuck up. And all you see is that. But what you don't know is that she's really hurting and that at home, her mom really doesn't talk to her, doesn't have a relationship with her parents that, well, that much. She goes home and it's just her and she's just by herself all the time. So she just has not even learned how to even like people. So before you judge her, just know you don't know her story. Learning how to communicate with people and dealing with conflicts, it was just so much easier on myself. I just enjoyed listening and learning so much about myself and, um, and being able to now know how to control how to speak to people in certain levels. I learned so many things that I can apply to my own life because honestly, I mean, I get into fights with my mom and now this can help me, you know, so much more, like talk to her effectively. Great presentation. Well, I enjoyed the fires uh, talking to us. It was it was just amazing to have someone talk to me like this because I've never, I've, I was, everyone's always told me that I need to work on that, but I've never known how and to, to be able to, to know step by step and there's a presentation about it that's like so amazing. Like all these things, they're, they're gonna help me in my life and I'm so happy to use them. I'm so happy to apply them to my life now. Our presenter was an amazing presenter. I've heard this before, but I never heard it this way. And this way, it opened more. It opened my mind more. So now I know, not only do I know how to respond to people, but she gave me an example. And that's, for me, that's worth a lot. So she's amazing. Uh, yeah, I think Ms. Rollins did a great job. Uh, the students were very engaged. Uh, they asked a lot of questions. And for me, when a student asks questions, that means they were paying attention. I know a lot of students took uh, away a lot of aspects. I feel that they can use from her uh, uh, workshop here to help them in their daily lives and to help them in their future endeavors and college and you know in their careers later.